I am Nitij and in this video I will be explaining the use of namespaces in the JavaScript language. Now namespaces are very useful in JavaScript because they help us in organizing our code. So uh, what I am going to do is I am going to explain several different features or good things about namespaces which, uh, which we can have by using them in our JavaScript code. So the first one is uh, the namespaces prevent the global scope pollution and how this works is uh, normally we create uh, all the functions and properties in the topmost scope or in the global scope which is also called as the window scope and any property or any function uh, that we have in the global scope might collide with the names of another function with the same name but uh, which might have been created by another library so there is a there's a chance that the the old uh, the old code or the old or the old function implementation might get overwritten by the new implementation accidentally so uh, we have to use namespaces to to prevent this from happening and uh, namespaces basically is separate the implementation details of a specific uh, member functions or objects from other objects which are which might be lying around in either the global scope or in uh, other namespace scopes the second one is a namespace helps in organizing the code so we can organize our javascript code with the help of namespaces uh, we can uh, how we can simply uh, create uh, different modules of, of, of our code so let's say that there are different parts like uh, there is a part to validate the input fields then there is a part for the data access there could be a set of functions uh, which uh, which might be related to the business logic so we can have different namespaces for all these different coding different different code parts and uh, those namespaces can have their own member functions in them and then namespaces help us in specifying the scope of the items and this means that uh, we can restrict the scope of an items uh, in the namespace by not allowing other uh, other members in uh, other scope or in the global scope uh, to access them directly so when we have to access any any function which is residing inside a namespace then first we have to write the fully qualified name namespace name and then after that we can proceed to access the member function then there is the separate application parts which is more or less similar to organizing the code so we can use a namespace to separate the application into different parts by creating different namespaces and then it helps us in writing modular code so uh, we can create modules for the uh, JavaScript code and we can assign functionalities to existing namespaces using individual modules and this is mostly accomplished by self-executing functions because they have their own scope and the members which are inside a self-executing functions are not uh, exposed outside to the global scope so we can uh, safely add functionality to existing namespaces uh, from these modules now let's get to the code so over here we have uh, an html file and i am going to add some html to it now uh, every company or team uh, actually not every i don't think every company uh, most of the companies and teams follow uh, a specific format uh, to name their namespaces uh, the most common one is to first write the name of the company followed by a dot and then the name of the product followed by another dot and then the name of the application module so for an example we can let's say the name of the company is my company and let's say uh, this company is creating you know what let's uh, have a real world example let's say uh, there is a uh, there's a there's an application which has been 
created in the in the in the Google and the namespace will start with Google and then after that we can write the name of the product uh, let's say that the name of the product is Gmail which is an application an email application and then we can uh, write the name of the specific module so in this case let's say that we want to write the name of the data access module so data access module might uh, read the data from the server or it will send uh, the data to the, to the server or it will post something so this is one example another example could be uh, let's take a generic one this time uh, let's say the company name is my company and then the product is my product and then the uh, name of the module is validation because uh, there could be uh, several uh, different functions which might be used to validate inputs so we can uh, we can encapsulate all of those functions together inside a namespace so that they won't be ex uh, exposed uh, to the outside world and the only way to access those uh, those those functions to validate the inputs is uh, to is by is by writing the fully qualified name of the namespace and then after that writing the name of the validation function now how we can create these namespaces so the thing is that uh, this topmost name is uh, has to be a property in the window and then this uh, name has to be a property in this uh, in, in, in this object so this has to be an object in the window as a property and then this has to be an object inside this object and this validation needs to be an object in the my product object so how we can do this so window and then we can write the name of my company equals to an empty object and inside this object we can have a property for my product which is another object and then in this object we can have the validation as a property which is again an object and, then, and in this validation let's suppose that uh, we have a function to validate let's say um, I don't know validate email exists uh, so this uh, method will this this function will simply check if an email which uh, is being passed as an argument uh, already exists in the, uh, in the in the database residing on the server or not similarly there could be more functions or there could be more objects but to use uh, but to use the these functions uh, we have to first write the fully qualified name of this entire namespace and then we will be able to access this function and then we can sending send, send in some values as an argument to check if it's true or not and that's it now uh, this function is not available in the global scope obviously because it is a property of this object which is a nested object inside a nested object inside this root object okay so there is a way to actually uh, handle this uh, namespace creation process and that is to create a function now I have already cr created a function to, uh, to create a namespace in the window and uh, this function uh, basically accepts a, an argument which is in this form uh, in which there are several parts separated by a dot so first of all an array is created by splitting this entire string by the dots and then uh, this function is checking if the root name is available as a property in the window or not if it is not there then a new object is initialized is initialized and added uh, with the with the name as as the as the with the name of the root as the first uh, as the first items name or the first uh, namespace part and then after that there is a loop which is simply uh, adding the rest of the parts of the namespace into the root namespace and finally this last object is being returned from this function so 
for an example if you want to create namespace for let's say this data access then this data access could be created by calling this create and this function and then we can provide this entire namespace name as an argument and that's it now what we can do is we can add more functions as its properties so a data access can have a get data function to get the data uh, by accepting a URL as an argument and then it will I don't know it will return some JSON data similarly we can have more namespaces for uh, events for business logic for uh, shared data for metadata and so on so that was it and I hope that you will find this video informative so uh, thank you for hearing me out and have a nice day bye